Hey, Flip Geometry. We're uh, back into Chapter 8. We're talking about tangents of circles today in Section 8.2. Let's get right into it. What is a tangent? So a tangent is a line um, in the same plane as a circle that intersects the circle at exactly one point. Um, so if you have two lines here that are intersecting the circle, line MH is not a tangent because it intersects it twice. Line DG is a tangent because it only intersects it once. And that place where the circle intersects the line is called the point of tangency. So um, a, a line intersecting a circle at only one point is a tangent. Consequently, the part of a line that contains the, uh, the point of tangency is the uh, tangent segment. It's really a, a minor difference. The entire line is the, tan is the line of tangency or the, the tangent line. And the tangent segment would be the part of that line that has the point of tangency in it. It's a, it's a nuance, but it's a vocabulary term you should be familiar with. So because this line only intersects the circle at one point, um, it has to intersect the circle at a 90 degree angle to the radius. Uh, because if it were um, in any way skewed from a right angle to the radius of the circle, then it would touch the circle at more than one place and it would not be a tangent. Um, so it, it has to be uh, perpendicular to a radius drawn from the point of tangency to the center of the circle. So here we have line AB, point A is the point of tangency, O is the center of the circle, OA is a radius. If we are told that AB is a tangent, then OAB must be a 90 degree angle. A radius intersects a line of tangency at a perpendicular angle. It has to happen. You can use that property to prove if a line is, in fact, a tangent. If you have a radi radius intersecting a line, and that line um, touches the circle uh, such that the, the line is a 90 degree angle to the radius, then that line is a tangent. Um, so if it intersects a, a radius on a point of a circle at a 90 degree angle, then you have a tangent line. Okay? It, has to be a it has to be a tangent, it can't be any other relationship. All right, here we have essentially a kite drawn on top of a circle. So uh, we have quadrilateral ABCD, um, AB and AD are tangent segments to the circle, um, and that means that uh, the angles here are 90 degrees, and so these are both radii of the circle, so they're equal to each other, um, and we're supposed to find the measure of the angles. Well, this is 90, and this is 90, and this is x, and this is 3x, it's a quadrilateral, and so all the sum of the interior angles is 360 degrees. So if I want to know what's x, well, 360 degrees minus 180, because I've got those two 90-degree um, angles there at D and B. So 360 minus 180 is 180 degrees, and then my two other angles have to add up to the remaining 180 degrees. I have x and 3x, that's 4x. 4x equals 180. So 180 divided by 4 is x, and so x is 45 degrees. Let me just show that to you here, but um, that's the logic here. And then once we know that this is 45, we could say what's 3 times 45. So measure of angle B is 90 and D is 90 because they are radii intersecting tangents. Okay, And so x plus 90 plus 3x plus 90 equals 360. 4x then is 180 degrees. If you combine like terms and then subtract the 180 out, we skip several steps in that. Um, then you divide by 4, and x is 45 degrees. So this is 45, and then what's 3x? Um, 3x is 3 times that, or 135 degrees. Okay, this is the kind of questions you'll be doing. Uh, if you have any questions about that, we can talk about it before class gets started. So we used this figure in the last example here, where you have a point and a circle, and that point is somewhere outside the circle. Given a point outside a circle, you can always draw two tangents. You can start at this point, and draw the tangent that intersects a radius at a 90 degree angle on this side of the circle, and you can draw a tangent that intersects a radius at a 90 degree angle on this side of the circle. So any point outside of a circle can be uh, included in two tangent lines drawn to a circle that it's not a part of. Okay, um, That has to be in the same plane. The, the text doesn't say that, but if point A is not in the same plane as the circle, then it doesn't matter, but it has to be in the same plane. But anyway, given that, uh, any point outside of a circle um, ha can create two tangent lines. 
All right, now this section does have a construction in it, and in, when I teach geometry, I do not teach construction, so my students uh, don't sweat this, but in case this video is used by other people, um, construction 13, how to construct tangents to a circle. So we're given circle P, and point X is somewhere outside of it. Um, let's see how we can construct two tangent lines. What you begin with is point P and X. We're going to draw a segment connecting X and P. Um, this is not a tangent because, um, well, this line, if we keep going, we intersect the circle twice, right? Um, this is just a straight line from the center of the circle to the point that I've identified. Now, I'm going to construct a perpendicular bisector to this. And in order to construct perpendicular bisectors, I take my compass at some estimated distance bigger than halfway of this. So I set my compass out to like this big. I'm going to make a couple of hash marks above and below. So, and then I need to do the same, uh, the same radius hash marks from the other side of the circle. So I have here uh, points that I can connect now and make a perpendicular bisector of this line that I drew. Now I have this point, which is halfway equidistant between the point I've identified out in space and the center of the circle. And now that I'm here, I can take my compass and set the point of the compass here and measure out to point P. And I have this radius from this point, okay? And I'm going to draw a semicircle that creates uh, the points of tangency that the tangents will intersect. So I'm going to draw a semicircle here, and this goes from the point, from the, the midpoint of the segment uh, to the center of the circle, that distance as an arc. Now, point A and point B that I've just identified, those are going to be the points of tangency for my new rays that I'm going to draw. Um, and these two rays are going to be tangent to the circle. So now I can draw my rays XA and XB, and I will have drawn two lines of tangency, two rays of tangency, from point X to circle P. Um, and then if I wanted to identify the radius, the radius would be from P to A and P to B. Um, so that is, uh, that is how you do that. My students, I won't make you do that, but in case somebody else is watching, this is how that works. Once you have uh, a, a set of uh, segments from a given point outside of a circle, and you have these two tangent segments, um, we can prove that the two segments are congruent, um, and it's pretty simple to do. So um, if we have here two radii, um, they are congruent to each other because all radii are congruent. XP is congruent to itself. That's the reflexive property. Um, and then I can, uh, because of the way that this was constructed, I can demonstrate that this angle is congruent to this angle, that this segment actually bisects the two radii. Um, and so the, uh, I have side, angle, side. These two triangles are congruent. And then therefore these lines are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So um, the theorem there is that tangent segments form ex from an exterior point of a circle are congruent to each other. So let's just walk through that proof that I just did for you, kind of spitballing on a picture. Um, I have circle P and I have point X and I have X A and X B that are given to me as tangent to P. So that's my given. I'm going to draw these three other lines, P X, P A, and P B. And it says line postula here, which is just that if you have any two points in space, you can draw exactly one line that contains them both. You can also, in proofs, if you're doing this, you can also just say auxiliary line, like I just need to draw this. Um, and that's okay. So. Um, PA then is congruent to PB because all radii of a circle are congruent. Um, PA is perpendicular to XA and PB is perpendicular to XB, which we have because any radii intersecting with a tangent meets at a 90 degree angle. Um, and then a radius to the point of tangency is perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, that they wrote that out. Um, and then, so I have angle PAX and PXB are right angles. That's the definition of perpendicular. And PAX and PBX are right triangles then because of the definition of a right triangle. So if these are 90 degree angles, then these two triangles are both right triangles. Um, PX is itself because of the reflexive property. 
And so therefore, these two triangles are congruent because of hypotenuse line. That's a different, or hypotenuse leg. That's a different way of going about it than what I did when I just walked you through it, but this also works. So I have here two right triangles, the hypotenuses, hypotenai, of those, of those two triangles are um, congruent to each other, and so are these two legs. So hypotenuse leg, that's a clean way, easy way to go. Um, and then therefore, XA is congruent to XB because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So um, that's another pathway through it, and uh, either of them would work. Um, and so we, we know that uh, the tangent segments um, going from any point in space in the same plane uh, as a circle to the, the circle such that it intersects at a right angle, those two segments are going to be congruent. Okay. Um, when a circle is inscribed inside a polygon, each side of the polygon is tangent to the circle. So that's interesting. If you have some shape, um, and they don't give you a picture of it here, but if you have some shape like a triangle and you inscribe a circle into it, so the circle intersects all of the lines of that polygon, then all of those uh, all of those lines that it touches are tangent points, and that's an interesting property uh, of an inscribed circle. The polygon is said to be circumscribed about the circle, uh, and we've used these terms before. All right, this is a really cool example. So I have a circle inscribed inside a irregular polygon, and so polygon PQRS is no identifiable kind of polygon just from any information I've been given. I don't know that it's a trapezoid. It certainly is not a square or a, or a parallelogram. Um, and so uh, I have here point Q, which, is, uh, which has two points of tangency to the circle, uh, QW and QX. And point R has two segments of tangency um, to the circle, RX and RY. Point S is part of two tangents of, seg of tangency, segments of tangency the circle S, Z, and S, Y, and then the same thing for P. P, W, and P, Z are tangent segments. So I know that um, every, every set of tangent segments going to the same point in space are going to be congruent, and so Q, W must be congruent to Q, X. So if this is 1.4, so is this. And same thing here. If this is 4.2, then so is this. And if this is 3.1, then so is this. And if this is 2.7, then so is this. So while I've only been given two, um, I'm sorry, I've been given four of the eight segments, I can find out exactly what the perimeter of this is pretty quickly. So um, I know all of these segments are, are congruent to each other because of um, the postulate that we just, or the theorem that we just proved. Um, and so I have two of each of these measurements, 2 times 4.2 and 2 times 1.4 and 2 times 2.7 and 2 times 3.1 just do some simple math and I get that the perimeter of this is 22.8. That's a pretty cool thing. I, uh, before I, I cheated and let the example play, I sat here and stared at this for a minute and I thought, hmm, how does this work? Do I need to figure out the diameter of the circle is? And, and I was trying to do some, some computation uh, on a piece of scratch paper. And then I thought, oh no, these are all congruent. Took me a little bit. So it's a neat example and I hope that you understood it. If you don't, we'll go through it in class. So once we figure out how tangents work with one circle, of course, the next logical step is to go big or go home, right? Now let's do two circles. So a common tangent is a line that is tangent to two coplanar circles. I have two circles and I draw a line so that it's tangent to both of them. Um, and I can do some cool things with those. Here's just a quick diagram of what I'm talking about. So circle A and circle B are coplanar. And I can draw a, a, a cotangent here, a, a common tangent and a common tangent here. And so these two lines, line C and line D, are tangent to both circles, to circles A and B. And of course, we've already shown that this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. And so by segment addition, I can tell you that uh, common tangents between two circles are all one length. That's kind of a neat property. Um, same thing here, I have two, um, two circles, and I can draw exterior common tangents to them as well. Um, and I would be able to demonstrate pretty easily that this distance is the same as this distance um, by using the interior common tangents and demonstrating congruent triangles. So there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do with these.
So uh, common tangents intersecting two circles. Um, there's terminology, and I actually already used it in the last slide, which is to have it up here so you can see them. Uh, there are common internal tangents that cross uh, and intersect each other. Um, and when they intersect each other, they will intersect uh, at a point that is on the line between the two centers of the circles. Um, and then common external tangents do not intersect in between the circles at all. Um, they, uh, they just go from outside of one circle to the outside of the next. Okay? Pretty familiar terminology. So you can have uh, multiple lines tangent to two circles, or you could have circles that are tangent to each other, or you can have circles that are tangent to the same line. So take a look at this fun little diagram here. Um, circle N, circle M, and circle P are all tangent to the same line. And they are also tangent to each other because they intersect each other at one point, at the one point that is represented by where that tangent line is tangent to all three of those circles. So we have internally tangent circles and we have externally tangent circles. Circles N and M are tangent to each other and the point that they intersect, um, uh, I'm sorry, and N is inside M, other way around, M is inside M. Um, and so they are tangent to each other, but one of them lies inside that, the other circle. That's an internally tangent circle. Or you could have P and N or P and M, and they are externally tangent to each other. Their point of tangency makes uh, neither circle inside the other. Okay, so look at that diagram until it makes sense to have internally or externally tangent circles. And that's it, folks. If you have any questions, we'll deal with them tomorrow in class, or you can put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Have a good night.